And as we come on the air, we are officially one week out from the first big political contest of the 2024 campaign season. Republicans blitzing Iowa, giving their last big pitch with seven days and counting until the caucuses. You got the future of America first standing right here. Anybody saying somehow like we're only doing I that's just a, a flat out lie. Uh, you know, you have to be built for the long haul. Keep getting used to this face. I'm not stopping. I'm going to fight for you until the very end. Pretend you're one point down. OK, you're one point down. You have to get out and you have to vote, vote, vote. OK, we've got team coverage across Iowa this morning. NBC's Ali Vitale in Sioux City, Dasha Burns in Indianola, and Vaughn Hilliard in Des Moines. Let's start with you, Vaughn, and the front runner, former President Donald Trump. What is his message to voters just ahead of the Iowa caucuses? Well, Anna, on January 6th, he made several references directly to the third anniversary of the January 6th Capitol Hill attack, in which he called the defendants hostages. Of course, for Donald Trump, throughout the course of his candidacy, he has not run away from the attacks of that day or the conspiracy theories, but instead has tried to use them to propel support in solidarity around him, his supporters, and his candidacy. I want to let you hear from Donald Trump this weekend. You know what they ought to do? They ought to release the J6 hostages. They've suffered enough. They ought to release them. I call them hostages. Some people call them prisoners. I call them hostages. Release the J6 hostages, Joe. Release them, Joe. You can do it real easy, Joe. Now, to be clear, a majority of the January 6th defendants have actually pleaded guilty. As for Donald Trump, he has a light schedule here in the week ahead. Over the course of the last month, Anna, he's only spent five days here compared to 12 days for Nikki Haley, 13 days for Ron DeSantis, and 23 days for Vivek Ramaswamy. And outside of a Fox News town hall on Wednesday night, he won't be back in the state of Iowa until this weekend with actual campaign rallies. Yeah, that's because he's going to be in the courtroom um, a lot this week. At least that's part of the reason he's not there in Iowa, which we'll discuss in just a moment. But, Ali, let's talk about Nikki Haley. Trump's been targeting her more and more. She's also faced recent criticism for comments she's made regarding the Civil War, also saying New Hampshire corrects the Iowa vote. What's her strategy this week, and what would success look like for her campaign in Iowa? Well, look, certainly not the kind of thing you want to lead with to Iowa voters, saying that the state that comes after them is the one that corrects the decision that they make. Haley, of course, explained that comment away over the weekend, saying she's kidding. All of the early states rib each other. Of course, that's true. At the same time, Nikki Haley saying in that clip you showed that people better get ready to see her face all the time. Yes, she's campaigning in the Hawkeye State, but snow is taking a toll here. You look around me, technically, this is an event that was supposed to start in the last few minutes. And, of course... It's empty. You've got empty chairs, stuff packed up in the corner, and signs just hanging on the wall. The only way you'd know that Nikki Haley was supposed to be here. They canceled this event just a few minutes ago because the snow is really coming down out there. I know you're going to talk about weather later in your hour. But for Nikki Haley, the goal remains the same, even if the weather is changing around her. It's be able to provide herself a springboard into New Hampshire from the Hawkeye State. And, you know, Vaughn and I are typically under the impression, after covering so many of these Iowa caucuses, that there's three tickets tickets out of Iowa. In theory, it should work that way, but it's so rare that you see the dynamics of a race be what they are right now with the front runner so far out and head and so consistently retaining that lead. It's going to be interesting to see whether or not the second and third ticket actually get any bounce out of the Hawkeye State. And who will be those second and third tickets? Dasha, Ron DeSantis's strategy has been to go all in on Iowa, but he's not in Iowa today. Why? Well, Anna, first, I'm at a Ramaswamy event right now. You can see that signature truth sign behind me. His wife, Apoorva, is holding a solo event here today. They're splitting up events. As uh, Ali said, the weather taking a toll on some of the travel here today. He's completed a double Grassley, meaning he's visited 99 counties, all 99 counties here in Iowa twice, which is pretty remarkable. But it is Florida Governor Ron DeSantis who has poured the most resources, put the most 
most eggs in the Iowa basket of any of the candidates. He's not in the state today because he is still the governor of Florida. He has to give his state of the state address uh, tomorrow. So he's preparing for some Florida business right now. But he has gotten the endorsement of Florida Governor Kim Reynolds, the endorsement of evangelical leader Bob Vanderplatz. He has moved a ton of his staff here to Iowa. He has moved uh, all of his money into Iowa. And that could be a problem for the Florida governor. Why? Because if he doesn't have a strong showing here after all of that, Anna, that is going to be a serious problem. It's going to be very difficult to argue viability going forward if he doesn't have a strong showing after putting so much effort into the state.